Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Breaking down the latest Chelsea news on a regular basis. Hope you're doing well and keeping safe on this Thursday. In today's news video, a lot of reaction to this across social media. Lukaku stating that he'll be staying into Milan this summer. What does that mean for Chelsea's transfer business? The potential hunt for a new striker trying to improve our goal scoring issues for next season. And as well, an update on another striker that's currently at Chelsea who could be making a permanent exit in the transfer window but before we get into any of that good stuff I want to ask you guys if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload also hit the like button because it helps new people find the channel but I uh, also want to say a massive thank you to Lucid FC my great sponsors and of course this ties into the giveaway I announced this on the community page I am about to announce the winner of the Son of Chelsea and Lucid exclusive shirt giveaway uh, but make sure guys support Lucid get down in the description box below an exclusive link for you guys to use where you can use the discount code CFC on all orders to get $15 or £12 off. So support the guys that support this channel. But to announce the winner of the giveaway, the Son of Chelsea and Lucid shirt that you guys have been entering in recent weeks on the videos. How excited you guys have been about the giveaway. Going to have more giveaways this summer, trust me, on this channel. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, and apologies to those that don't win it, but congrats to, and this is the winner of the giveaway on screen right now, Vashek PV. Congrats to Vashek PV for winning the giveaway. Get down in the comments below. Um, and respond to Lucid's comment. I'll be commenting. You can give them their details, direct message, all of that good stuff. So you can get the shirt, the size you want, and all of that good stuff. So congrats, Vashek, for winning the giveaway from Lucid FC. And thank you, Lucid, for sponsoring Let's Talk Chelsea in 2021. But let's get into the big news today. Um, a lot of reaction, for some reason, a lot of panic last night uh, because Lukaku in an interview uh, over in Belgium, of course, getting ready for uh, the Euros this summer, has said that he wants to stay at Inter Milan. And Matt Law reported on this right here. As you can see, Lukaku wants to stay at Inter Milan in blow to Chelsea's transfer plans. Chelsea have been dealt a blow to their hopes of re-signing Romelu Lukaku after the striker claims he wants to stay at Inter Milan and revealed he's already spoken to the incoming manager, Simeone Inzaghi. Antonio Conte's departure from Inter had raised question marks over Lukaku's future, with Chelsea expressing their interest in the Belgian ahead of last week's Champions League final. It remains to be seen whether Lukaku's view will change if Chelsea make a firm offer to bring him back to the Premier League and whether or not he was simply being diplomatic. With Borussia Dortmund insisting Erling Haaland is not for sale and Tottenham Hotspur unlikely to do business with Chelsea over Harry Kane, Lukaku had been viewed as the most realistic of the Blue striker targets. Just to read you the comments, these were the big comments that went around last night uh, from Christophe Terra who, who is a, a Belgian journalist uh, a lot of people know him in the Chelsea community this is what he had to say yes I am staying I've already had contact with the man who normally becomes our new manager maybe I wouldn't say that yet but it was a very positive conversation so a lot to say I mean I think that obviously it would be a blow if we can't get Lukaku this summer I have said consistently he is my first choice I think he'd be such a perfect signing for Chelsea um and it sort of then raises the question of what is plan B for Chelsea? Because all of the comments in recent days have been that Chelsea are going to try to strengthen. They're going to try to try to strengthen the squad with two or three big quality signings, top quality signings, quality over quantity, um, which is a big thing. And a, and a big thing I think we have to take note of going into this summer in terms of the way Chelsea will go about their business. I think what that generally means is that I think if Chelsea cannot get their first choice, they're not going to waste 30 to 40 million on players below their expected level, which I think is the right choice because I don't want Chelsea spending 30 to 40 million on players who will only be squad players that's been the issue before I'd rather give those spots to younger players and spend more on bigger players that can really upgrade our first team because that should be the ambition to really improve on winning the Champions League I think the biggest I, I guess that you go sort of what's the backup plan I think the obvious name here that is instantly brought up is Jadon Sancho now I had Dan McCarthy on my channel before the Champions League final just going to play you a clip here of what he had to say about the Sancho situation and Chelsea potential interest in the English winger and so yeah with Sancho Chelsea like him Chelsea have always liked him scouted him for years always had him on the books Chelsea fan apparently and friends of a lot of the players at the club loves London C could a deal could be done if Chelsea were like okay we want to buy Sancho a deal could be done Chelsea have got him up there on the list but he's not number one he's not even number two he's not even number three probably on that list centre-backs forwards centre mids are, uh, are definitely ahead of that the only way I can see us going for Sancho is if the pursuit of a number nine doesn't go well and you, and Chelsea can highlight one of their wingers to leave. Like, OK, we know we can get rid of someone here if we get Sancho. Only way I can see it, but Dan, as you just heard me say, it's a lot of if, buts and maybes, right? It's too many moving pieces. So I don't think it's the right time. And I think Man United might aggressively pursue that and he'll go to United. So 
I can see that for sure. But yeah, and to your point uh, earlier about the the creativity, right? Yeah, we, we're like Arsenal in a way. Arsenal back in the day, like play good football, and we create so much so many chances in the attacking fair, but there's just no one there to finish it. So it very much was incumbent on a few things. And I think number one is if we can't get a centre forward, you'd think that maybe Chelsea, their big attacking signing will instead be Jade and Sancho. They'll try and battle Man United for his uh, for his signature this summer. Um, we, we've had rumours, of course, about Jade and Sancho last year. That never happened, but he never went to Man United. And, you know, Chelsea could really strike a blow to Man United, who for months now, even over a year now, it feels like they're going to be the team that's going to get him back to the Premier league um but chelsea could be that team instead just looking at his stats from this year uh 16 goals in 38 appearances so it's not only creatively i know a lot of people love jane sancho for his creativity but it's also his eye for a goal from from out wide too that i think is really impressive and i do think that if we cannot get a striker i have said before i don't think we need any more wide players but if you can't sign a new striker and you want to sign a new attacker yeah you would spend the money on jane sancho wouldn't you because he is such an extraordinary talent um so i think that's a that's a good option i am gonna i know some people are gonna get frustrated by this i'm gonna bring up uh, tammy abraham i've said this before if we let tammy abraham go who's been one of chelsea's top goal our top goal scorer top goal scoring striker this season or last season now and we don't bring in a striker who's going to improve us um that's a dangerous move in my opinion and i don't know why you'd let tammy go without bringing someone of top quality and i mean you could argue that sancho is that replacement in a sense you know if he could add to our creativity and goals i think what you are relying on then is sharing goals around a lot more. You're hopeful that Kai Havertz can really start to flourish and get even more confident in this number nine role. He's just scored the winner in a Champions League final for Chelsea. We've seen how he's developed in that role and the false nine sort of role he has and some doubt over if we were to sign Lukaku, we'd still have to radically change what he does. You think about Werner having a stronger second season, Mason Mount scoring more goals to what he's already done this season. Christian Pulisic, if he can stay fit. I do think if we were to sign Jadon Sancho, I think that's the end for Callum hudson the way. I just have to be honest. I think it would be the end. And I wouldn't be too surprised, as we've seen in recent reports, if hudson the would maybe be a part of that deal or at least he could be going to Dortmund on loan or going permanently I just I think the position that Sancho plays you think of all of the wide players we'd have in the squad Ziyech, Pulisic, Werner, I know Kai, Mount you know players who can play in those three spots unless we have a radical formation change next year it's going to make it really difficult for Callum I think it is so a big question mark I think would still be posed about hudson Adoy's future um, but I also think as well I know some people uh, sort of panicking about you know oh we can't get Lukaku so let's look elsewhere where we're saying the Premier League, for instance, at Danny Ings. Um, I don't think that's a massive upgrade, I have to be honest. Um, I just don't. I think I look at the stats of Tammy Abraham and I think that, you know, if Tammy being a young striker, if he had the same amount of chances in the Premier League, you know, goals sort of per 90, I think it's really impressive. You need to upgrade. You need to upgrade seriously for me. I, I don't think if, once again, if you cannot upgrade seriously, there's no point wasting money for me. I'd rather invest that, say, on a midfielder like Declan Rice if we can, um, or Jaden Sancho. So that, for me, be my personal opinion. I like Danny Ings. I respect Danny Ings. I think he's had a really good couple of seasons at Southampton and, and has consistently scored goals in the Premier League but is he a world-class talent is he a world-class striker I personally don't think so and I'd rather actually stick with Kai Havertz personally than just in my opinion based on a project player who, who is going to turn out to be I think an amazing player for Chelsea in the coming years and as well Andre Silva good talent had a good season for I track Frankfurt but is he a massive upgrade on what we have I personally don't think so um, another name that has brought up a younger player who could be joining the squad next season is Armando Broja is currently due back with the first team for pre-season for some valuable time training under Thomas Tuchel this comes from Nazar Kinsella he's currently in talks with Chelsea for a new contract after a good loan at the test he'll delay a decision on his future until later in the window um, exciting to see that he will take some part I mean I think that there's a lot of players younger players who will be involved in a proper preseason this year or at least close to what we'd want from a preseason. so Tuchel will have a chance to look at those players we'll have to see who Chelsea sign um, I think I'll wrap all this up by saying don't panic yet because I've, I don't even think the transfer window is officially open yet or it's about to be um, Lukaku in some ways could be diplomatic here um, when I had Dan McCarthy on I think it was Dan McCarthy who said this that Lukaku is just not going to push his way out of Inter Milan. He's happy there. He's settled there. Chelsea, I think, have to be aggressive on that front. If Chelsea come in with a serious bid, it might change things. I mean, if Lukaku, a few days before the Euro starts, starts you know, saying that I'm leaving Inter Milan this summer, it's going to cause upheaval. Just because he said that, that doesn't mean... That 
100 percent he's staying in to milan this summer so things can change very radically in the transfer window as we know and I, I bring that up constantly and as well we're champions of europe just celebrate us being champions of europe there's a lot of weeks left to go before we get to the start of next season many things can change new targets will arise uh, a massive thing could happen in the transfer window that we don't expect yet that could really improve our squad for next season so just you know i'd say relax going back and watch the, the final on saturday savor all of that as we have the chance to now and we'll wait and see what happens in the coming months and the second story to speak about today is Michi Batshuayi. Remember him, a uh, Chelsea striker who's been on loan at Crystal Palace this year. Adam Newson. Uh, of course, I had Adam on the channel yesterday. Please go and watch the video. Uh, we had sort of nearly a 30-minute discussion reflecting on being champions of Europe. Uh, Adam was out in Porto watching a game, so we sort of cover everything surrounding the Champions League triumph. So please go and watch that. It'll be up in the cards, uh, so please go and check that out. But his report for Football London today was talking about Batshuayi. Chelsea make Batshuayi transfer decision as Belgian star attracts Premier League interest. Batshuayi is set to leave Chelsea permanently this summer and Football London understands at least one top half Premier League club is interested in signing the Belgian international. Interesting thing about Michi, his record at Chelsea, despite never being the main forward and, and a lot of us feeling he's, he's never really been good enough to be the main forward at Chelsea. Adam put below sort of when he was sharing his article this stat here. Batshuayi's Chelsea career is an interesting one. Has never been first choice yet has averaged a goal every 97 minutes, which isn't bad. I mean, you could argue a lot of his minutes have come in like FA Cup games against lower league sides uh, I remember him scoring quite a few last season under Lampard against Grimsby so you know some of those numbers could be inflated and I think we've seen he struggled at Crystal Palace this year he struggled with previous loans um, I think his best loan was actually with Borussia Dortmund when he was playing alongside Christian Pulisic um, I think that was what 2018 I think it was um, so he will be moving on I think Matt Law has reported since uh, Adam's first piece that I think the club will be Leeds I remember this time last year him being linked to Leeds uh, so that'd be an interesting move for him um, I think the great thing about Batshuayi is and this it somehow relates to the Champions League triumph he will always have the West Brom goal that will still be remembered as one of the biggest goals we've had in recent years uh, the winning goal in a Premier League title triumph he had some good moments as well you think about the winner against Atletico Madrid you think about um, the winning goal against Ajax in the group stage of the Champions League last year so I think people generally like Michy Batshuayi I think he's a good character I hope he does get a permanent move and playing under Bielsa I hope he can find form again find some confidence and get his career back on track but let me know your opinions on Michi Batshuayi in the comments below. But that is it for this edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch it. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Chelsea, and I'll see you again.